Project 100 is motor speed LED. I am going to move the slide switch to position C and the yellow LED will light but the red LED won't and the motor will not spin. Now I'm going to push the press switch and please turn down your volume. Now the red LED, the fan, and horn all come on. The LED is bypassed and now current can flow through the rest of the circuit. A lot of electrical devices in your home probably have indicator lights that are on to indicate that the device is working, which in this case, uh, the red LED is indicating that the fan and horn are on. Project 101 will explain how energy can be converted from one form to another. During this project, energy will be converted into several different forms. I will begin with showing how light energy, such as that from the sun, can be converted into electrical energy. When enough light hits the solar cell, the LED will light because that light is being converted into electricity. It might be hard to tell and you have to hold the circuit up at just the right angle, but the LED lights up whenever there's enough light on it. That energy from sunlight will also be used to charge the battery. That energy, electrical energy in turn, is converted into chemical energy by the battery. And then the chemical energy is converted back into electrical energy, which in turn is converted into mechanical energy, which is also motion. That energy is being converted into motion when the motor spins. If you want to, you can mount the solar cell on the pivot stand and connect it to the circuit using jumper wires so that you can place it in light much easier. Project 102 is very similar to the previous project in that it depicts and explains the converting of energy from one form to another. But in this project, all forms of energy are internal. There are no external forms of energy converted, such as solar, such as light energy. For the first part, I am going to move the slide switch to position B. The chemical energy from the battery will be converted into mechanical energy. And then when I move the slide switch to position C, you will notice that the LED lights up very briefly. That is because the mechanical energy is being converted into electrical energy and it lights the LED for a brief moment. For the second part of this project, replace the motor with either the yellow LED or the horn. Now, when I move the slide switch to position B, now volume warning please, the chemical energy will now be converted into sound energy or air pressure variations. That's how sound is produced. And likewise, and now this time, the sound energy cannot power the LED because it is a different type. Finally, for part C, I am going to replace the battery with the hand crank and I'm going to place the motor back on. And now, what's interesting is now mechanical energy will be converted into electrical energy, which will then be converted into mechanical energy again. And then I might be able to quickly move the slide switch back to position C. Oh, it doesn't work, but 
if I, if somebody else moved it to position C, the fan would convert the mechanical energy back into electrical energy for the LED. Project 103 depicts the conversion of energy, but on a smaller scale than the previous project. I am going to move the solar cell in direct sunlight and the red LED lights up briefly because that light energy from the sun is converted into electrical energy to light the LED and it also enters the capacitor where it's stored as electrical energy. I'm going to push the press switch, turn down your volume just in case this is loud. Now that energy from the capacitor will be discharged through the horn where it will be converted into sound energy. Now for part B, I will replace the horn with the yellow LED and when the capacitor is charged and then discharges, now the energy is converted back into light energy. The electrical energy is converted back into light energy. Then for part C, I will replace the yellow LED with the motor and fan. Now the energy that the capacitor stores will be converted into mechanical motion energy. The fan will only move a small bit, but that explains the principle of the conversion of electrical to mechanical energy on a small scale. Now I'm going to move right to project 104, which is called mechanical energy conversion. I'm going to replace the solar cell with the hand crank and then you will repeat the other parts of uh, the parts of the previous project but I'm just going to do the fan this time. When I spin the hand crank I am converting mechanical energy into electrical energy and then that energy is converted back into mechanical energy when it spins the motor briefly. And there you have it. For the project triple current meter, I will move the circuit so that the solar cell is directly exposed to light. The meter will be set on the 0.5 milliamp setting and the slide switch to the C position. Now when I move the solar cell directly in sunlight, the current is too high for the meter to record on the 0.5 milliamp setting. So in that case, I will move the, the switch on the meter to the 50 milliamp setting. Now the meter records just under 3 milliamps when the solar cell is fully exposed. Now I can push the press switch and that will activate a resistor in the pivot stand to greatly limit the current. Now I move the meter back to the 0.5 milliamp position and now but still that doesn't seem to do too much. We then can move the slide switch to the B position and now the current drops even more because an even more powerful resistor in the pivot stand is included in the circuit and so not as much electricity is produced by the solar cell. Clock with memory is pretty simple. Move the slide switch to position B and the battery will power the clock. However, if I move the slide switch to position C, disconnecting the battery from the circuit, the clock will still work because the capacitor has enough energy to power it for a while. So during that time, you could hopefully charge the battery in some way and then reconnect it to the clock so that, before, so that its memory 
would not be lost. For this project, I am going to move the slide switch to position B and push the press switch. You will see that the meter records the current when the solar cell is in direct sunlight. The meter is set on the 0.5 milliamp setting and it's recording the current that is charging the capacitor. When I move the slide switch to the C position, the capacitor will discharge and that energy will briefly light the red LED. I'm going to do this again. Move the slide switch to position B and push the press switch to charge the capacitor and then move the switch to the C position again and the LED lights up briefly. For any project that requires the solar cell but not the rechargeable battery, you can, re you, you can use the rechargeable battery in place of the solar cell if you do not have an adequate light source. For project 108, I am not going, I wasn't able to get this project to work properly, but I can explain to you the principle. When I push the press switch, turn down your volume, the fan will spin and the horn will sound. Now, when the fan is at full speed, the horn is supposed to stop. It's only on, it only sounds briefly when the motor starts up. And then, very carefully, you would stop the fan with your finger. Now the sound gets louder, but it wasn't supposed to sound at all when the fan was spinning at full speed. The increasing sound is indicating that the motor has stopped spinning. This is an example of a warning system built into an electrical or electronic device that might let you know whether it is malfunctioning and then you could repair it. Now if I was to let go of the motor of the fan and this, it picks up speed again, the sound decreases, meaning that it is working again. For project 109, saving energy, we will move the slide switch to the C position. The meter will be set to the 50 milliamp setting volume warning and the battery powers the motor and fan, red LED, horn, as well as the radio, which is attached via the battery eliminator. And you will need headphones to listen to it, but what you can do then is remove certain items. Now you can see that the meter is measuring close to 50 milliamps of power being used right now, but if I was to disconnect, let's say, the radio, you can see that it drops to 40 milliamps. And now three and a half. Now if I was to remove the horn, that doesn't make much of a difference, but let's say I remove the red LED. Be very careful. Look at that. Now the motor is the only thing that the battery is powering and it is just over 10 milliamps. And this is just like turning off electrical and electronic devices in your home such as lights, fans, your television, your heating and air conditioning system, your radio in order to conserve electricity and that's very important when saving the environment. Not only that but it is also beneficial for your energy bills as well because they will be lower when you consume less energy. Of course it's okay to use devices when needed but when you're not using them or when they're not necessary, you should turn them off. You could also see 
which of the, de of the devices in this project uses the most current. Leave one device attached while removing the others and record the current for each one to determine the device that uses the most electricity. And to me, it seemed like the radio and LED both use about the same amount, but the highest, over two and a half volts.